Hi everybody, it's Meg from walkingmoose.com and this is a test to see how I can get to where my glasses don't glare. This way or this way. It's Meg from Walking Moose, and it's time again for What's on My Shelf. And this is that fun time where we actually go and look on my bookshelves and see if I've actually got anything about the from the author that I am referencing, which is today, Mary Stuart. So I have done a big shelf look on Mary Stuart, and I actually don't have a lot. Um, I'm sick to death because I just got wildfires at midnight it was a 15 dollars paperback but i got it at half price books and i was so excited about it and i just finished reading it like day before yesterday and it's gone it's completely gone i don't know where it is but i do have some other things that we're going to talk about and we're going to talk about mary stewart and why i loved her so much um she and i were close well we weren't as close as we could have been because i never met the woman but she just really changed my life as far as reading. And so first things first, we are going to talk a little bit about Mary Stewart and what she wrote and why I love it so much. Now, I've got this annoying glare on my glasses and I keep going like this so you don't see the glare. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take them off. I'm just going to set them up there because sometimes I do that. And we are going to talk Mary Stewart. Okay, so Mary Stewart wrote, um, prolifically, she wrote the, um, it's a Merlin trilogy. So it's three books related to the Arthurian um, saga, and I will put them up right there. Um, I found this great cover of the three books. Now, I will say right off that I was not a fan. I tried reading the first one, The Crystal Caves, and it just didn't work for me. It just wasn't something that I was into. I went with her standalones and I'm calling those, these are the pre-James Bond in a female form. Um, they're not Bond girls, they're actually James Bond, like they're James Bond-esque in that you have all sorts of wonderful locations and wonderful locales and they're very exotic um, and our girls, our heroines, are just wonderful. They're classy, um, they're beautiful, they're smart, and they figure stuff out and they get it done. They are victims of their time and they are sort of put in that box, you know, in that post-modern feminist, you know, before you had the real feminist movement, obviously before Me Too, before Helen Reddy, all that kind of stuff. They were before that, but they still held their own and they were great. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through um, some of the books that I loved. And if I don't have the actual physical book, I'm still gonna talk about it and I'm just gonna put it right up here um, as an example and so that you can go and look it up. Okay, so the first one that we're gonna talk about is The Moon Spinners. Um, right here, The Moon Spinners. And I got this copy recently. This was a tough find for me because as you all know, from watching my channel that I love to prowl the used books, bookstores and just finding the book is part of the fun. So I found this copy and it's a good copy, it's a nice copy, but I found this other cover on the internet. Ugh, isn't that just beautiful? That's just wonderful for Moon Spinners. I thought it was fantastic. Um, so Moon Spinners is great. I haven't read it all the way through, but they did make a Disney movie with um, Haley Mills. Haley Mills was in it and I saw that years ago and I was just blown away. I thought it was wonderful. So the Moon Spinners takes place on the Greek Isles. Um, a young woman involved, I believe it's smuggling. It, she's not involved in smuggling. She has to find out who is involved in smuggling. So Moon Spinners, that's gonna be a definite read this summer. And then I've got the Gabriel Hounds. Now, isn't this a great copy? Uh, I can't say enough about Half Price Books. Half Price Books, if you're listening and you want me to, to sponsor and you wanna sponsor my videos, please do, because I think you're amazing. So I found this at Half Price Books in Oklahoma City and it was wonderful. Here's Mary on the back. Mary. She is fantastic. Such a wonderful writer. So the Gabriel Hounds, this takes place in of all places, Syria and Lebanon in the 1960s, early 60s. 
and it was just a wonderful story it was a wonderful read you've got that wonderful imagery of the desert and everything it's it's fantastic the gabriel hounds is wonderful um now the very first mary stewart book i got was this one and it's pretty you know tame there's nothing on here i got this from a library used book sale i don't know if you guys ever frequent those um but the library will occasionally just sell off extra books for a dollar or whatever and i got this and it's actually got um three novels in it it's got my brother michael nine coaches waiting and madam will you talk and madam will you talk was her very first very first story and it was fantastic they're both just absolutely fantastic reads they're very well all three of them are my brother michael takes place in greece again and it's all about a young woman who gets involved with a young man who is trying to find out what happened to his brother during the second world war it's it was just amazing it starts out where she's in a cafe and there's a car and the car gets dropped off to her and she has to drive the car and she of course takes the challenge and drives the car and it's exciting um nine coaches waiting and madam will you talk both have a similar theme with a child in peril now it's not like a stephen king child in peril which i won't read you'll never see that here because that's too much child in peril but this is, you don't know who to trust in these two. Um, our young women heroines in these two novels have been instructed to, you know, care for these children. In Nine Coaches Waiting, she's actually a governess. And in Madam When You Talk, she is on vacation. She's on vacation in, I believe it's France. She goes to France with her girlfriend and it gets involved with this young boy. And they, you don't know if the father is coming after the young boy to harm him or if the father is coming after him to care for him. It's really exciting. Um, so all the Mary Stewart's are great. Now, the one that I loved and I cannot find at the moment is Thunder on the Right. I'll just put it right up here for Thunder on the Right. Um, it's, it's, that one is one of my all-time favorites. That takes place in the Pyrenees Mountain again, Pyrenees Mountains again in summer, and it has to do with this really wild plot. It is just one of the most interesting plots you'll ever read. You really have to open that window for belief on that one because it's, it's you know, you have to really, okay, I'll buy it. I'll buy that there's a certain kind of color blindness that only cousins would have, and it's really weird, and I would buy the murderous nuns, and I'm gonna buy the whole thing. Just, just take your check out and buy the whole thing, but then you should read Thunder on the Right. Lost my train of thought there for a sec. Then you should read Thunder on the Right and you will love it. Um, but I did, I did kind of want to talk about what I was referencing about pre-James Bond girls. And again, they're not Bond girls in that they're not, you know, what is a Bond girl anyway? It's just sort of a, a sex object. They're not like that. They're stylish and they're beautiful and they're smart. Um, and to me, mid-century modern, that whole style of mid-century modern and the fashion and the homes and everything like that during that time, that just really appeals to me. And that is what Mary Stewart is to me. Um, Mary Stewart to me always makes me think of that wonderful mid-century modern fashion. And so I've got some examples here. Um, of course, you will recognize Audrey Hepburn. And then I've got two other examples of mid-century modern fashion. And this is what the girls, the young women in our Mary Stewart novels are wearing. And I just think it's wonderful. I just, I can't get enough of it. I think it's great. The other reason I think they're very pre-James Bond in a female way, not in a feminist way. We can't call them feminists really. Maybe early feminists, a couple of them, but they always do end up sort of, you know, buying the marriage, I don't want to say myth because I'm married and I'm happily married, but um, buying into marriage is the only way to go because the Mary Stewart girls, they're not gonna hop into bed just like that. They're not doing that. No, sir. But, but they are gonna hop into bed once they get the ring, once they get the ring. Um, 
And that's fine because that was the era that they grew up in. Mary Stewart was not someone who was going to rock that boat because that wasn't her thing. Her thing was to give us enjoyment and to give us these stories and they're wonderful stories. The other reason that I love Mary Stewart is she talks a lot about travel and these women are put into places and into situations in locales and cultures that they are not familiar with and that's fascinating to me. The Gabriel Hounds, just the whole in and out of her making her way around the city and the way the city works, you know, in Syria and Lebanon and, you know, the way they have the, the structure of it and everything was fascinating. Um, and, you know, travel, again, during the mid-century, that was when it was classy, you know, it was classy travel. You aren't like shoved in an airplane you are now, like you are now, and, you know, waiting for someone to get liquored up and punch out the stewardess and everything. Thing. No, you were really classing it up and you were having a wonderful time doing it. Um, so if you want, I'm going to recommend Mary Stewart to you. She's probably not for everyone. She takes a while to get going. But if you want to really read a wonderful story and to really sort of be swept away in that mid-century modern fantasy life that I want to be swept away to, you really want to check out Mary Stewart. You really do. Um, I have some very good insights into what life was like, you know, in 1953, 1963, um, you know, even beyond that by reading these books. A little slice of life is really what you're getting. You're getting adventure and you're getting the exotic locales, but you're also getting a slice of life. And I want to tell you, if you want to go even further into Mary Stewart, because she's such a phenomenon, she's such a phenomenon and her original covers were so beautiful. And then the reprints and, you know, there've been some reprints recently that have just taken cover art to the nth degree. Um, and you know, Mary's life, her actual life, she was married to a man, they lived in Scotland. You can see pictures of her home, it's very Downton Abbey. If you want to get even further into Mary Stewart, I want you to check out this blog. I will link it down there. It's Mary Queen of Plots. And a wonderful woman by the name of Allison um, is the host of this blog. And she has just got so many gems. I bet you didn't even know that Mary Stewart wrote children's books. She wrote wonderful children's books. I haven't been able to get my hands on any of them. For some reason, they're not at the library. I can't find them at the used bookstores. But if you go to the blog, Mary Queen of Plots, then you will see these wonderful, wonderful children's books. Um, and it really, it's a wonderful, it's a, I keep saying wonderful, but it is a great way to spend a summer evening having some fun and reading these adventure stories, these young women adventure stories. Think of it like this, Nancy Drew has grown up and she's out there being very continental. Um, don't look for any recurring characters. Mary Stewart didn't do that. These are not series. You could pick any of them up. Just if you want to find a place that you're just interested in reading about. If you want to read about France, if you want to read about Spain, if you want to read about Greece, if you want to read about England, then you need to pick up. She's got a title for everything. She's got a title for everything, but go to Mary Queen of Plots and you can see all the books listed out and you'll see synopses and everything and you'll really enjoy it. Well, I'm sorry that I didn't have too many on my shelf. I just had the three. Um, I've got two more that are lurking around somewhere, Thunder on the Right and Wildfires at Midnight, which takes place on the Isle of Skye, if you want a fantastic location there. But those are my recommendations for Mary Stewart, which is all Mary Stewart. Just read all Mary Stewart and you won't, you won't be disappointed at all. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.